sure there's nothing in here. And do we have a gun? I can't. Nope. We have some ammo, though. That's going to be incredibly useful when I do have a weapon. You know, assuming I get one within the next five and a half hours. So. Uh, one other thing to note, they do change the ammo and weapon positions here sometimes in the past couple updates, but I don't think anything really generally spawns at the back of this hangar. Something useful to note. But I could be wrong. I'm very often wrong. Does not appear to be anything useful. They do spawn something, so let's... Let's get over here quickly and see what it is. And look at that, some more ammo. So they have changed that. Things do spawn at the back. It's very interesting. It's something very useful to note, obviously. And we are quite near some zombies, so I'm going to have to be very careful. As I always am, of course. Just the stealthiest of of peoples. I don't think there are any weapons in this hangar, which is sort of unfortunate. Turn off my flashlight. So I think it was over here somewhere. There you are. And it's just a patrol pack. That's not very useful. So my headset is telling me that there is a zombie right around this corner. Now, I can't tell if it's actually getting brighter or darker. Just have to hope that that truck doesn't come barreling by and make me roadkill. Let's continue forward into the darkness while I sweat quite profusely. I'm telling you, this is a better workout than a 5k run. Oh, there is, in fact, a zombie 5k run. I don't know if any of you are aware of this. I can't remember the exact location. It is somewhere in the US. Quick flash to see if anything's here. Ammo. It's located somewhere in the US and it's a 5k zombie run and what happens is you run and then they pay actors to actually chase you and it sounds like the greatest thing I have ever heard. Now I, I normally, I do go for runs, I am quite athletic as a person because you always got to be ready for the zombie apocalypse. And if I've learned anything from watching the movie Zombieland, it's rule number one, cardio. So I am quite active, and I feel like I feel like I need to attempt this at some point. This, this run, this sprint, marathon, if you will. Take the heat packs, may use one of those. But other than that, nothing very useful. And we are back into the semi-healthy range. Again, have to be careful with applying the light source. And now it becomes the task of figuring out whether he's somehow blocked off the entrance to this little building because that it could be a very, very likely possibility, and would suck quite tremendously. So let's just sneak in here. Excellent. Okay. So he's not blocked it off. Up the stairs, and hoping that we find some weapons now. I. I think at the top floor, that's where I usually find all the useful information. So we're definitely going to go there. Let's grab everything for the sake of grabbing everything. And we may, I think, if I can find a weapon right here, 
Ah, uh, drat. Let's grab this slug. I really would like a weapon. I don't under... Sometimes you can go through, because the weapon spawns are completely random, sometimes you can absolutely just go through a map, not find a single thing, and then other times you can go through and just find like eight different weapons at once. And it sucks quite tremendously. So let's grab this. So how about we play a little game, see if we can attract the attention of said vehicle driver. Now, this will most probably give away my position immediately. But I think it'll be fun all the same. So let's... Whoops, that's not what I want to do. Let's switch to our flares and let's throw a flare. And remember, holding it, the flare, we'll throw it farther. Also note that zombies are actually attracted to flares. So right now, you can see there's a couple zombies on the edge. You will see more approaching that area. So let's throw one this way. Just for the lulls. There's one over there. You can see the zombies chillaxing over there zombies around there. A couple more on the side heading over. And unfortunately back in the day that's what we had to do. We had to throw these flares and use them and they would just be a beacon. They were a signal to the zombies. And of course Rocket decided to make the flares red because there's nothing more terrifying than having zombies gore your eyes out in some friggin red apocalypse world. In fact, the first time I played this game, I played at night, and I I almost cried. I am I think it's very manly to admit when you almost cry, and I have to say, I almost cried. So as you can see, zombies are attracted to the flare. And the thing about it is, not only are they attracted to the flares at night, but they're also attracted during the day. So if you ever have a bunch of zombies on your butt, and you need to get rid of them quick, just throw a flare somewhere. Uh, actually, that's not accurate. If you ever have a bunch of zombies in your way that you want to sort of shift away, throw a zo uh, flare or even chem lights to the side. Let's throw a chem light. Chem lights, I don't believe, are as bright. Smoke grenade, that's not very useful. I don't think I can... Maybe I can't even throw chem lights. Let's see. Oh, I don't have one equipped. That may be the issue. Right. Let's throw a chem light, shall we? And there's the chem light. And wow, I have a good throwing arm. Did I throw that into space? <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> okay, how about we throw it a little bit closer? That, that sounds like a great idea, Danish. Let's throw it this way. And there you can see chem light. And how about we just throw it right here because it's getting ridiculous. You can clearly tell they don't produce as much light. There you go. So chem lights, they don't produce as much light. They can be more useful as just a single player. Uh, not as a single player, but as a player trying to move quietly, I get, deceptively. Of course, flares just attract a gigantic mob. While chem lights, they can be a little bit more subtle. So, you can take use of those. Of course, the flashlight is probably the best item of all because you stay hidden from the light. And light is everything in this game. If you light up, zombies can see you. Though I have to say, you should be more fearful of sound than light while playing this game. How about I actually do something instead of standing around and explain things? Let's head back down. And hopefully not get ourselves killed on the way. Because that would just not be fun, right guys? Watching me die painfully due to some really unforced, horrible error. was It's not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable. I do believe that driver is gone, though. Now, one thing I will note is that I didn't actually hear the driver's car... And I find that interesting, or truck rather, 
You'd think I would be able to hear that. That would be really noisy, but it wasn't very noisy. I think that's something that should definitely be changed if that's the case. It may have just been the case that I was just so stricken by fear there that I couldn't think properly, but I don't think that was it. Let's check around here. I think all the zombies are actually checking out all the flares everywhere. Now, you have to be aware that throwing flares is a beacon to not only zombies, but other players. So, be very aware of these flares. Be very aware of people around these flares. They will come. Trust me. Trust me on that sole, sole thing, if I've taught you anything during this entire series, is that when you try and do things, they will come. I have done it. Yes! Let's take this M9. M9, one of the more powerful pistols, but it also is louder than the Makarov. So you just have to be aware when using it that you are going to make more noise. So we're going to continue in this direction. Don't believe there are any zombies nearby. So I feel sort of comfortable running. Where are you? Right, let's continue. I have a feeling that just at some point I'm going to be run over by a truck coming from behind me. And I'm going to hear some angry, or I guess it would be happy, German across the radio waves proclaiming that I have died in one of the harshest languages I've ever heard. Actually, interesting enough, for those of you who don't know anything about Danish or German, and this is just something that I could be completely wrong on, this is just something that I feel is my personal opinion and... Of course, it being my opinion means it's absolutely important. And it's... It's... Whoops. I need to... I forgot. I need to actually arm my flashlight one second. Because I want to be able to see... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! <laughs> Uh-oh! Whoops! Well, I think we're going to have to head back. <laughs> Danish Madden, oopsie. Made quite a big oopsie, actually. When I g went to pick up that pistol, I forgot I actually had the flashlight equipped in the mini weapon slot. So I actually traded my flashlight for the M9, which is quite pretty sort of horrible. Let's run back. What was I saying earlier? Oh yes, Danish and German. Now, I could be completely incorrect by stating this. Stating this? Sorry. There was a light. I saw a light. Is the truck going to appear out of the darkness and plow through me? There's a zombie nearby, that's for sure. There you are. Hello, Chucky. Just let me sneak into here. And I'll leave you alone. Alright, where are you, flashlight? There you are. Let's throw the flashlight into my bag. No! That should be something that should be fixed. All right, now we have the Magnum. Excellent. How about we also clear up some space for my stuff? No, that's not it. 
For the M9, I'm actually not sure how many slots it's going to take up. So the chem lights in here, pack lights, heat packs rather. Okay, let's see. I don't have enough room. Let's drop. Oh, do I have enough room now? Man, why we gotta play these games? Why we gotta play these games? All right, how about now? You're annoying me, game. All right, whatever. I don't need no flashlight. I can play this game on my own. Anyways, back to the original topic on hand about Danish and German. The Danish dialect, to me, has always been incredibly soft. A very soft language, and I, I really do like it a lot. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I know I get the question a lot, Danish buns, are you Danish? I'm actually technically not Danish. My mother is Danish. My father is actually Iranian. He's from the Middle East. So I'm pr kind of a cool mix. But my mother did spend a lot of time with me when I was growing up. So I actually did learn a fair amount of Danish. Of course, it's pretty basic Danish because she would speak to me Danish. But she never had me respond to her in Danish. So I actually learned how to understand Danish, but I can't speak it, which is something that's pretty interesting to me. The same thing goes with reading Danish. I can actually somewhat read, but I can't write it. I am absolutely horrible at writing it, and I will try and sound it out when I write it, but it there, there are so many silent letters that I just fail atrociously but I do know a little bit of Danish and I've been around Danish people and uh, they're a hoot let me just say that but I've also been around a bunch of Germans and German dialect is a much more harsh dialect they are very vigorous with their their k and their t and it's funny to me because Though they are very vigorous, I can find tons of similarities between the two languages. And I think that's that's pretty neat. So I think what you should do right now, instead of watching this video, is go and watch a side-by-side -side comparison of Danish and German. Let's be honest, you're not going to learn anything from this. Alright, I'm actually, I actually have no idea what direction I just headed in. Okay. We are near the sort of I don't know. I want to say radio control tower, but that's not it because the radio control tower is back there. There are some zombies nearby. I can't hear them. So I'm just going to have to be careful. Sneak through here and try and equip up. Oh my goodness. That was... This is not going well. Zombie. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, ow. Open the door. Oh, my God. Hey, zombie, you want to play with fire? Whoops. No, <laughs> that's, that's not exactly the exit I want to make. Ready, zombie? Are you ready to do this? And down the zombie goes. Now let's let's bandage myself up. My goodness. Oh, I thought I had just dodged it. But as you can see from that range, anything from hearing to slight visibility, it'll attract a zombie. And I should probably do a couple tests to show the actual ability to attract zombies. But just be aware, if you ever break three bars on anything, you're essentially going to attract a horde. There's nothing on his body. So let's check this area out. See what we can find. Maybe we can find something nice. I better find something nice. I just lost friggin' 1200 blood. There's a hatchet. That's going to be very useful. 
There we go. Grab that hatchet. And now we have a hatchet equipped. Now, I'm noticing some glitching out bodies. Sort of strange. But other than that, there doesn't appear to be anything else in this area. So I've walked away with M9 and two clips. Of course, as you just saw, M9 is very powerful in terms of its stopping power. Poke my head out here. There's a zombie over that away, but I don't see it now. Let's see if we can actually enter this hangar. You can't. Of course, be very wary when you enter these places. Is that a toolbox? It is. Now I definitely can't die because now I can easily fix vehicles. And by easily, I mean I can't really do anything without other parts, but I can do something. What do we got here? Engine parts. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a large enough pack to carry that, or I would. That appears to be it. Well, that's sort of a bummer. I was hoping to find some useful equipment here. Oh, Sev. Let's grab that right there. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to call it right there before I have a heart attack. Thank you guys for watching this episode of this show that I do where I talk to myself while I play a video game, specifically DayZ. If you guys are not following me on Twitter yet, and I'm going to excuse you now, before this point, after this point, I'm just I'm just gonna cry myself to sleep. But you know, I I do talk on Twitter, I do things on Twitter, and I may not be like the most talkative guy, but you know, you can come on there and ask me questions, and I'll respond to you. And you know, if you send me messages asking me questions and stuff like that, I will respond to you. Of course, I get a fair amount of comments every day, so I can't respond to every single comment, but if you have any questions for me specifically, send them my way through my Danish Bonds Twitter or my other things where I spend my time on all day because I have nothing better to do, ignoring the fact, of course, that I have a full-time 40-hour-a-week job. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.